So this question is, um, uh, how slash why uh, did you decide to open liquor stores in some of your in some of your stores? What was take us through that process? Because people like to drink, <laughs> <laughs> um, and we're the I think we're the third largest liquor store in the state now. We've got 150 liquor stores, if you can believe it. And five years ago, we weren't in the business. We're not in the business. I um, we're in the business. We were in the business in the in the Palm Beach area, West Palm Beach area, back in the late 80s, and we had three stores, and Walgreens cleaned our clock, so we got out of the business, and uh, so we came back into it, and it, it, that's a wrestle. It's like that opening on Sunday. It's like selling beer uh, in our stores in the early 60s. I mean, those were board decisions that they wrestled with uh, to decide, okay, is this the right thing to do? Because we're, you know, we're this wholesome company, and people think of us as being different. That, that Sunday opening was unbelievable, and I was, I was kind of handling PR when we did that starting to um, it, it's just it, people think of us differently and and so you do wrestle with that but we open on Sunday because Albertsons was taking all the business on Sunday and it was amazing to see on that first Sunday we were open the number of new faces of customers that we had not seen in our stores before so we knew there was an, a need for that and you know how many shop on Sunday now uh, and and uh, many times it's in many locations it's our busiest day of the week you would think Saturday would be, but now it's Sunday. Did I dance around it or did no, I? No, you did great. You did great. <laughs> Here's one that you may dance around. We'll see. Oh, there was recently a recall of ground beef around here. How does Publix react to those type of emergencies to make sure customers get the news that they need? Quickly. We have, uh, I actually, I, I did an interview about this recent uh, meat, beef recall. Uh, I think out of the Orlando area. And I think one of the things that were compelling to me was a reporter actually reported on the fact that how responsible our corporation is in the event of a product recall. Because your safety in our stores is paramount to us. We understand the importance of that. And so whenever that knowledge is brought to our attention, we respond within hours of communicating to the stores communicating externally to the masses through media. That if you, for instance, in this particular instance, if you happen, to, even though the product, the, the uh, date range of the codes, those, lot, those particular lot numbers were no longer in the store, but if you happen to have it in your freezer, bring it back. And you, of course, you know the public's guarantee you get fully refunded. But also, we're just, in, some, in some cases, people just bring about meat anyway. But we ask no questions and we just take it back because that's part of our mm -hmm. customer service. Um. We've been working with the federal government a lot recently um, to, to boost that recall, because we thought they were slow. We thought it was taking them longer to get that information to us, which wasn't fair to you as a customer. And so we've been working uh, to change those recall notices and get them, get them quicker. Yeah. yeah, and Bri, if I can add too, sometimes, sure. you know, and, and while the, the media is, is our, are our friends, our partners in, in a lot of efforts, um, oftentimes the message gets a little bit distorted, you know, because this particular small voluntary recall went to the national level and CNN was reporting it, Fox News was reporting it, and all they said was meat recall. And so, and not getting the specifics, but our, our, our highly trained associate at the store still dealt with that whenever customers had questions. There's a couple of questions on this. As a corporation, how are you addressing social media? Do you believe in one corporate uh, outlet of uh, social media or store ownership where every site has their own presence? Uh, what's your strategy in terms of social media and customer experience? Uh, actually, that's mostly in my area. So, um, But Dwayne's lucky he doesn't have to tweet and all that yet. Um, we are looking at, we do have a Facebook page. We took a long time to develop it and um, I don't know what our fan number is. It's like 25, 26,000, I think. Um, but Publix Subs, which is not owned by Publix, has a hundred and something thousand fans. Um, so we're, we're very deliberative about doing things because we know how it affects so many, uh, both internally and externally. Um, we, th I shouldn't say that, Clayton and some other people within the company think it's more important to be uh, to have a Twitter account than a Facebook account. We and my kids say you shouldn't. Why are you on Facebook? You don't. You know what's a grocery store doing on Facebook? But it's amazing the the links and the connections that have occurred from that. Um, but I think um, Twitter is where we probably will go next 
um, when we get to that point, but we need agents to do that and that sort of thing. But um, that's when you're standing in the deli line and you don't have any rotisserie chicken and you're tweeting that. And so we have to have people all the time to be prepared for that. And we're just not ready for that yet. But Facebook is still the community piece and, it's, and we have very few complaints. I think it's less than 10 that have come to us uh, via Facebook, but we know Twitter's a whole different thing, but that's more interactive and right then. And mm -hmm. So we are looking at all that and figuring out how to handle handle it. I'm not sure uh, what is entirely meant by this, but I, I guess I think it's who within the organization, but who gets credit for the buy one, get one free program, and is it a loss leader or is it profitable for you all? That is interesting because when the economy went south, a lot of people came to Publix private label products. And um, many of you are used to them and you're used to the high quality that, that we have subscribed to in that program, but many of you haven't. And so in order to save money, they came to private label. Well, now the national manufacturers are trying to buy you back. They've missed you and they, instead of sending you a, we've missed you card, they're, they're doing buy one get one freeze and 10 for 10 and all sorts of great marketing programs to get you to leave us and go back to them. And it's, that's, it's just basic. Yeah. And it's successful. <laughs> it's successful. Yeah. Uh, here's one that we'll, perhaps we'll end on unless we've got a couple more out there. And um, philanthropy is clearly important to the public's model. Uh, how does it accentuate your marketing efforts and help your bottom line? I think I alluded to it earlier in my comments is that you know, one of the foundational principles of our, of our founder when he, when he opened his first store in Winter Haven, Florida, one thing he wanted to do not just open a grocery store. And one of the, I think one of our marketing campaigns was we're more than what's in the bag. And so whenever we open a store, whether that, whatever community that may be, you're going to get, there's some other things that comes along with that. There's, there's huge connections. We become weaved into, if I could use this phrase, fabric into that local community. I mean, I, again, I, I applaud our community partners that came out today that, that approached me and said what they said about how much they appreciate Publix. And that's 82 years of that. And we believe that is a great point of difference in the, in the competitive, even though that's not the reason why it was first started to do in phil uh, philanthropic yeah. efforts, but that is one great point of difference when Publix comes to your community. We will be connected, we'll be a part of it, and it's a and it's, it's great part of who we are, it reflects who we are. And again, back to that, that phrase of we're more than what a, gro a grocery store, we are a personality, we're an entity. So I, I think each one of you, if I ask you the question, what do you think public sales? Yeah, you know we're a grocery store, but I think it means something different to each of you because of the image and what started with our founder over 82 years ago. I think a lot of it is uh, we like to get involved. We, it, it's very simplistic to say uh, we're, we're giving back because you're kind enough to shop with us and you deserve that. We need to give back to the community. Um, but Rob and his team here, just like everywhere, they love getting involved. Uh, you know, March of Dimes is huge, United Way is huge with us. We, we've got a lot of stuff that we do. So we, we try to get deep into different groups. When we move into the Atlanta, market, we decided, okay, we're only going to get involved in five organizations and we're going to get really deep. We're going to give them a lot of money, give them a lot of help, and then we're going to walk away. In five years, we're going to walk away and we're going to tell them that. Well, we can't do that. <laughs> so we didn't do that. Um, but but because our people are just, that's what they love doing. You know, they love giving back. And Mr. George was quoted years ago. Um, somebody said, well, you know, how much would you be worth if you hadn't given all this money away? And he said, probably nothing, um, which is kind of cool. Yeah. 